What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 220-1002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about computer safety procedures such as equipment grounding, proper component handling and storage, toxic waste handling, personal safety, and compliance with government regulations. Let's talk about equipment grounding. So grounding an electrical system simply means making a direct connection from the building's electrical service to the earth so that dangerous voltage from line surges and lightning strikes will find its way to the earth instead of injuring people, damaging equipment, or causing a fire. Every three-pronged grounded outlet in a building has a direct connection to a metal grounding electrode that goes several feet into the earth. The use of properly grounded outlets provide an element of safety for the user and the computer. Let's talk about proper component handling and storage. So electrostatic discharge or ESD, this is the sudden flow of electricity between two electrically charged objects caused by contact with an electrical short or dielectric breakdown. A buildup of static electricity can be caused by tribal charging or by electrostatic induction. The ESD occurs when differently charged objects are brought close together or when the dielectric between them breaks down off Often creating a visible spark. Without ESD protection, static electricity will seek to discharge to anything else that has a different electrical potential, especially metallic items like circuit boards. And the four key areas for protection against ESD are anti static bags, ESD straps, ESD mats, and self grounding. An anti-static bag. This is a bag used for storing electronic components which are prone to damage caused by electrostatic discharge. So when removing a component from a computer, immediately place it inside of an anti-static bag, and then place it inside of a protective box to avoid physical impact damage to the component. ESD straps. So an anti-static wrist strap. This is an anti-static device used to safely ground a person working on very sensitive electronic equipment to prevent the buildup of static electricity on their body, which can result in ESD. It consists of an elastic band of fabric with fine conductive fiber woven into it attached to a wire with a clip on the end, which is connected to a ground conductor. Next, we have ESD mat. So an anti-static mat is one of a number of anti-static devices designed to help eliminate static electricity. The ESD mat can be connected to a device being repaired using one of the following methods. You can connect it with a cable via an alligator clip, or you can have a cable with a loop designed to be held in place by a case screw, but with the cable snapped to the mat rather than to your wrist. And then we have self grounding. So if you do not have access to an anti-static ESD wrist strap or a mat, a last resort option to prevent the buildup of static electricity in your body from damaging computer components is to simply self ground yourself by touching a nearby metal component before touching the device you plan to work on, such as touching the metal portion of a chair. And you can self ground by touching an unpainted portion of the case with both hands before installing or uninstalling a component and you want to do this every time before you touch a component. Now, as a note, prior to working on electronic equipment, you want to always remove jewelry from your body. Do not touch the chips, contacts, or other circuitry while handling the components. You want to hold them by the edges or the bracket. And also, if possible, perform work in non-carpeted areas to help prevent the buildup of static electricity and also avoid using AC powered tools near the computer. Let's talk about toxic waste handling. So five types of computer related toxic waste that you need to know about as far as this exam is concerned are batteries, toner, CRT displays, cell phones, and tablets. Let's talk about batteries. So do not throw cell phone, computer, ups, or any electronic device batteries in the trash. You want to recycle them in order to prevent them from becoming toxic waste. And ways to recycle electronic batteries are as follows. You can use a recycling drop-off station, such as a drop-off station at an electronics retailer. You can return the batteries directly to the manufacturer for recycling. And during the storage and transport of the recycled batteries, you want to make sure that the battery content are prevented from touching one another. 
Toner. So toner bottles and cartridges for laser printers and copiers should be recycled instead of being discarded. Unlike with batteries, users can actually earn money or credits towards additional purchases by recycling toner bottles and cartridge products at local office supply stores or toner recycling shops. Then we have CRT displays. So CRT displays, they contain heavy metals, including lead solder on older models. And the CRT can retain potentially dangerous electric charges long after it has been shut down. So to avoid these hazards, you want to use an approved electronics recycler for CRT displays. And cell phones and tablets. So as previously mentioned, batteries for cell phones and tablets should be recycled. But before disposing of these devices, you want to be sure that any personal and company data has been safely deleted. And you want to also ensure that the SIM card has been removed. All right, let's talk about personal safety. So the first thing you want to do is disconnect the power first. So before working on any type of electronic equipment, always disconnect it from its power source first to avoid potential electrical hazards. You want to remove jewelry, remove all kinds of jewelry, and do not allow jewelry to come into contact with any of the components. Let's talk about lifting techniques. So when lifting a large or heavy item, you want to stand close to the item, squat down to the item by bending your knees, grasp the items firmly keep your back straight and slowly lift with your legs and not your back you want to be sure not to twist the body and keep the item close to the body to help prevent back injuries weight limitations you want to know your weight limitations to avoid injuries so as a general rule if an item is heavier than one quarter of your body weight you should ask somebody for help let's talk about electrical fire safety so buildings they should be outfitted with smoke detectors and fire extinguishers the proper type of fire extinguisher for an electrical fire is a class c extinguisher if the fire is too big to handle you need to dial 911 and evacuate the building immediately if the fire involves a live electrical wire you need to shut that thing down at the source but do not attempt to do this with your bare hands and make sure that your feet are dry and that you are not standing in water and then to do this you want to use a wooden stick board or some type of rope let's talk about cable management so routing power cables and data cables inside of a pc is important for providing good airflow to allow for proper cooling and properly managing external cables will help to prevent people from tripping over the cables and falling out and busting their head and let's talk about safety goggles so you want to wear safety goggles when performing computer repairs cleaning or upgrades to avoid eye injuries from dust dirt flyaway screws or bolts, solder or other activities. And then we have air filter mask. So if a job being performed requires metal machining, buffing, sanding, soldering, waste processing, recycling, or painting as part or all of your technology related work, an air filter mask might be required for safety. And finally, let's talk about compliance with local government regulations. So compliant with local government regulations is a necessary part of legal and safe electronics and technology work. So you need to check with your local municipalities for recommended electronics recyclers and also follow the regulations for ventilation and other workplace issues as well. All right. So in summary, we have talked about equipment grounding, component handling, toxic waste handling personal safety and compliance with government regulations. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get right up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 2 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.